Let me be what I'm meant to be. I'm not asking for permission. I'm gonna end it. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my non-spoilery review of Punisher Season 2. I'll explain what's going on, what the producers have said about possible Season 3. Obviously, all the actors have been talking about it. But if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do a new round of that IMAX giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Punisher moment on the video. I'll also rank this season against my favorite Marvel Netflix seasons of the other shows at the end of the video, too. They went the Logan route, which I feel like was a smart move. You pair the battle-worn, weary character like the Punisher, grizzled old hero, takes in a young girl who they vow to protect at all costs. She softens him up, inspires him, and he toughens her up at the same time. But because the Frank and Amy characters aren't quite as sympathetic as the Logan and Laura characters, their relationship just never quite hits the same highs that you get from the Logan movie. I mean, no big surprise, the Logan movie is a masterpiece. Of course, it's going to be better than pretty much everything else. The Amy character was sort of a replacement for the micro relationship from season one. You know, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that he does not appear during season two, which was a bit of a surprise for me. They never really address it, but he was meant to be the comedic relief. So you pair those two characters up. Amy was kind of the comedic relief in the way that Laura was the comedic relief in the Logan relationship. Like he just trying to react to all the crazy stuff that she would do. There have been a lot of people that have called it a sophomore slump. I did feel like the series was an improvement on season one, but it does suffer from a bit of the Netflix bloat where you have, say, like eight to ten episodes worth of story that you stretch out into 13 episodes worth of content. So they start off real strong. You get to see a more balanced version of Frank Castle in the introduction trying to enjoy life. And for a little while, you think that he might find some peace, maybe find a new family. But then the real fun of those first couple of episodes is the tension you feel just waiting to find out what WTF moment is going to set it all off and draw him back to darkness. Like what's going to pull him back into the game? Ben Barnes did a fantastic job as Jigsaw. He is the main villain of the season, if that wasn't clear. They have the John Pilgrim villain character, but I'll talk about him in a second. The way they wrote the Jigsaw character during season two works well because of all the work they did in season one and his emotional connection with the Punisher. So he's haunted by dreams of the Punisher from what happened at the end of season one. The way they explain the Jigsaw comic book name is a bit of a left turn, though. They use it as more of a mental thing. So his mind is a jigsaw of memories that he's trying to piece back together. So he doesn't totally understand what happened between him and Frank. When the season picks up, he's confused about why he keeps hallucinating the Punisher. So a big part of his season two arc is in piecing those memories together and then answering the question as to whether or not he's capable of starting over and finding any kind of redemption or if he'll just turn evil again once he remembers what he did during season one. To its credit, the show does a really good job of answering all those questions definitively by the finale. There's a very definite bookend for his character. There's no cliffhanger or anything like that. I know I'll get into that when I talk about potential season three stuff. But if you've been a big fan of the Karen Page Punisher relationship ever since Daredevil season two, they lean into that pretty heavily again during this season. They give you like a couple brief moments to make you wonder what's going to happen between her and Daredevil. And given the events of Daredevil season three, it makes some of their interactions all the more interesting. Like some of the ways that Karen acts around Punisher, it does kind of make you question the timeline. Like, hey, wait a minute. Weren't she and Matt making like they were going to get back together at the end of Daredevil season three? But technically that didn't officially happen happen at the end of daredevil season three they were going to reform that new law firm but i don't think that they ever officially answered the question of whether or not they were going to be a couple again hold on you're going to move back into matt murdoch's uh, yeah, apartment yeah. i just figured he has a healthier life worth balance mm -hmm. and actual friends he doesn't have a job though so what do you think <sighs> why the hell not Nelson, Murdoch, and Paige. Mm. Paige, Murdoch, and Nelson. Hang on a minute. <laughs> that actually has a nice ring to it. <laughs> 
They just kind of implied like they were in a better place and they might get back together at some point, but they didn't definitively say, oh yes, they're definitely a couple. So they do tease you a little bit with some of their scenes together. Like, wait, you know, what's going on between the two of them? They have this weird chemistry together. So if you really enjoy that type of stuff in previous seasons, there's a lot more of that this season. But there is a direct Daredevil shout out during their interactions that serves as a little more crossover and a reference to the Daredevil Punisher relationship going back to Daredevil season two. But for the most part, Punisher Daredevil crossover now is through the Karen Page character. It's really like Karen Page Punisher crossover. We cannot talk enough about the action scenes. As you would expect, they are A+. That's probably one of the biggest reasons why you would watch the Punisher TV show. For the insane stunts and crazy over-the-top battles and gunplay, he is the soul of gratuitous violence in the Marvel Universe, and Punisher Season 2 holds nothing back. You even get a little bit of that from the new John Pilgrim villain character. He even ups the ante just a little bit more in terms of how crazy they get with their fight scenes. But even though the new John Pilgrim character has a couple interesting moments, he never quite rises to the level of Jigsaw in terms of interest. I mean, he's supposed to be this terrifying religious fanatic. He's this crazy mercenary, and the religious stuff gives him an interesting dimension, but I didn't quite feel like he was ever a real threat to the Punisher, and the resolution to his character arc wasn't all that satisfying, so I wasn't really excited with him by the end of the season. I was also not super hot on the way they wrote the Homeland Security agent Dinah Madani that was returning from season one. Her arc had an interesting conclusion, but most of the season was her spinning her wheels in a really unsatisfying way. If you felt like she was the world's worst Homeland Security agent during season one, being completely duped by Jigsaw and then not really figuring out what was going on till the finale, she really doesn't get any better during season two, but the actress did a good job with the material that they gave her. I feel like that was largely a consequence of the way she was written, not the way that she was acted. But if they do get a season three, then I feel like she'll be in a much more interesting place and a much more interesting character. So like I said, sadly, there was no micro. That was a bit of a disappointment. They never really explained where he or his family went, assuming that they're on the DL, just chilling out, trying to lead a normal life. I think they left him out mostly in service of pumping up the Punisher-Amy relationship, which even though they had a couple of really good moments, I was never quite rooting for as hard as I was rooting for Logan and Laura during their movie. But if you can get past some of the taffy stretching in terms of story pacing, there are some amazing fight scenes and a few really solid comic book moments in what seems like a definitive conclusion to all the story arcs they set up in season one. So if the show is canceled in a couple weeks, you won't be left with a bunch of cliffhangers wondering what happens to all the characters. Like, what happens to XYZ? Like, they answer all that at the end. Everybody gets a definitive ending, so there aren't any really big questions that I was left with in terms of the characters. This is mostly the story, season two, of Punisher becoming comic book Punisher if you didn't feel like that happened during season one. When I say that, I'm talking about him not wondering whether or not he's actually going to continue as the character. Like, he has decided, I am the Punisher, I'm going to fully adopt this persona and go about trying to clean up the city the way that I do it best. There isn't any kind of post credit scene or anything like that, but what I might do in a couple days is a video for the ending and explain a little bit more about what the producers and John Bernthal have said about the future of the show and how they feel about where they left things. Right now, as with all Netflix shows, they'll probably pitch a third season if they haven't already, but that doesn't guarantee that Netflix is going to pick them up or anything. Like the Daredevil season three showrunners, like, I'm going to go pitch season four. Then a couple weeks after that, Netflix was like, yeah, we're definitely canceling Daredevil. There's going to be no season four. If it really does turn out that they get canceled, I'll say John Bernthal has been the most fantastic Punisher that I've ever seen. I really do hope that whatever Marvel decides to do with the character next, they keep John Bernthal on as the character. Regardless of whether or not they want to keep his TV show in continuity or they just want to completely reimagine him or put him in the MCU and just already have him be the Punisher and not deal with any of that backstory, we can talk more about that when I do my next Marvel Netflix video. But leave all your requests in the comments below and let me know what you thought of the season in general once you have a chance to see it or at least a couple of the episodes here's my new ranking of my top five favorite marvel seasons so far so it goes number one daredevil season one still my favorite daredevil season three because i felt like that was a new high for the series daredevil season two then punisher season two and jessica jones season one let me know in the comments what's your favorite season of all the marvel netflix shows 
I know a lot of people were questioning whether or not they wanted to take the time to invest in actually watching it if it's just going to be cancelled in a couple of weeks. It's definitely worth checking out for John Bernthal and those crazy action scenes if there's nothing else that you find really compelling in it. So definitely give it a chance if you haven't already. But what will happen is, is there'll be more Marvel stuff posting this weekend. Leave all your requests in the comments below. Click here to learn about the really big surprise Marvel character that bought the Avengers Tower in the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer and click here to rewatch both of those Spider-Man Far From Home trailers. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.